it all started on day one of my life. I was born by artificial insemination. I grew up in a lesbian household with two moms. I never had a father in my entire life. I had never been at church, never heard a sermon, never heard a worship song. Yet in the midst of all of these circumstances, God not only pursued me, he not only chose me, but he saved me. Now is the time for California. Wherever California goes, the entire world will Guys, I'm so excited for today's video. I just wanna share my testimony of what God has done in my life because the reality is, you know, scripture tells us that one of the ways we overcome the enemy, we overcome the devil, is by the word of our testimony. And when we release testimonies into the atmosphere, what it does is it builds faith, it encourages us and emboldens us, and ultimately, it potentially has breakthrough for us in our own lives. So I hope that my story today, um, really does those things for you because when I look back at my life, I'm, I really start to see how much God truly did. And it's, it's amazing because the only way that I'm sitting here right now, and the only way many of you are watching this right now, is because of His grace and because of His kindness towards us through Jesus. And so, you know, my story, as you heard earlier, it literally starts with day number one. I was born by artificial insemination. And, you know, the reason why my mom decided to have me that way is, well, number one, she had this great desire to have children in her life, which I think is so amazing. I mean, that is a design of God that, that women would bear children. However, you know, my mom it was living in a lesbian lifestyle. And so at the time, that's the way she decided to have children. And what's really crazy is I have I haven't looked too in depth into artificial insemination, but from what my mom has told me, you know, they kind of gave her a few different, you know, guys to choose from in order to be impregnated. And she chose one and, and that's how I was created. But what really blows my mind is if my mom would have just chose one guy to the left or one guy to the right or whatever, whatever circumstance you want to put there, I most likely wouldn't be here on the earth right now. And so the scripture is where we, where we talk about or where God says, you know, I formed you in my mother's womb. I created you in your innermost being. Like that is, that, that scripture has such a depth to it for me because I know that without a shadow of a doubt that God literally chose me and crafted me before the foundation of the earth. And it's just so mind blowing. And he did the same for you. And and so as my story progresses, right, so I'm born, you know, from zero to 16 years old, I didn't really have any traumatic experiences, praise God. And I lived a life that I thought was normal. Um, but the truth was, is anytime we don't walk in the design of God, we can't walk in the blessing of God and usually life is much more challenging than what it needs to be. And you know, I also wanna say this before I go further in my story. Many people ask me the question, you know, how is your relationship with your mom? My biological mom, she has been the most amazing mom to me. She has loved me, she has supported me. Even to this day, I know my mom would literally sacrifice probably even her life for me because that's how much she cares for me and loves me and so mom if you're watching this i love you i'm so grateful that god gave you to be my mother you know i remember as as i was growing up that my mom i, I literally would lay on her chest probably to an age that was a little a little longer than needed to be but you know my mom raised me with such love and she really she really valued me she really cared for me she took care of me you know my mom was the only one it was a single income and she eventually had my brother a few years after me so it was a four person household on on one income which you know we made we made it work my mom made it work we, we you know we grew up in an area that was a um, you know it was more on the impoverished side definitely had what we we had food we had a house we had a car we had all the things we needed but it was definitely in an area where poverty was something that was common um, and you know in the midst of that 0 to 16 time frame though nothing really traumatic happened I remember I felt so lonely you know I felt uh, no purpose I felt like nobody truly saw me or nobody truly cared for me you know really what it was as I look back now is it was the orphan mentality the orphan spirit that took control of my life because I didn't know God I didn't know my true father and I didn't know my identity as a son of God. And so as I look back on that time in my life before I came to the Lord, it, it's incredible because all these circumstances, you know, all these atmospheres, you guys, I had never been in church. I never heard a worship song. I never heard a sermon. You know, nobody ever prayed for me. Nobody ever prophesied me. I never heard the gospel for 16 years of my life. So in the midst of all of that, 
God still showed up, which, which blows my mind to this day. And so I remember at 16 years old, a, a friend invites me to church. And, you know, at the time I was a, I was a quote unquote good kid. You know, I had good grades and believe it or not, I actually was really timid. I was really shy. I didn't, you know, I had friends, but I really didn't talk to girls. Like I really didn't have social skills. And I know that may be crazy to think of right now, but that's, that's where I was before I knew my identity as a son of God. I, I didn't have a father. I didn't know my father. I felt so lonely. I didn't have confidence. I I had no skills, I wasn't saved, I had no grid for who God is, I had no grid for Jesus, no grid for the Holy Spirit, but sure enough, I go to this church service at 16 years old, and my friend who, who invited me asked me, you know, how did you like it, and at the time, I didn't know, but I, I encountered the presence of God for the first time in my life, and, and it felt so good, and so I told my friend, hey, I really enjoyed it, but next week, um, I want to go to the high school service, I want to I want to meet people my age, but the funny thing is, my friend who invited me, didn't want to go to the high school service and so it was really challenging because this church was in a city that I didn't grow up in it was about 20 minutes away from where I live so when I walked into this high school service there was about 150 students and I didn't know one single person and now looking back that's what we would call an act of faith a taking a step of obedience the Holy Spirit drawing me to Jesus. And so I remember after a couple weeks of going to the high school service, the pastor came up to me and he prophesied over me. And once again, I had no clue what that was, but he said, man, I see leadership on your life. And I remember in one of the worship services, I didn't have this crazy open heavens moment, you know, praise God, um, if you have that. But I just remember feeling the presence, the tangible presence of Jesus in my heart. And I said, I know that you're real Jesus. And I gave him my life. And I remember going home that night and after I gave my life to Jesus and I just remember kind of being in my room just saying, God, if you're real, would you meet me? Would, would, I want to feel your presence. I want to know you. You know, I don't want to just be a good person or read a good book or go to a good church. God, if you're real, I want to encounter you. I want to I want to know you to the depths of my very being, to the depths of my very soul. And, and sure enough, for the first time in my life, I started encountering the presence of Jesus on a daily basis. This was the moment of my life that I went from the kingdom of darkness to the kingdom of light, that I went from eternal judgment to eternal salvation. I mean, it, it's really incredible that what God did in that season, but here's something, here's the truth about my story is my testimony actually doesn't end there. The week before I got saved, it was the first time that I was actually introduced to pornography. And so that created, that began about an eight year journey of being addicted to porn. And I'm gonna get to the end of that journey here in a sec. And so, you know, I get saved and, and I have this porn addiction and, you know, I didn't I didn't have a prayer life. I didn't really understand the word of God. I wasn't being discipled. I was going to a local church. But the truth is, is right after I got saved, about a year later, I graduated high school and I was so new in my faith. I didn't really know how to hear the voice of God. And I was pursuing baseball at that time. So as I grew up in Los Angeles, I went to a college in San Diego because it was the best opportunity for baseball and here's the thing you know like most people in college most students i was just trying to figure out who is ross god what do you want me to do with my life what is my destiny you know what what should i pursue and so i remember from 2012 to 2016 when i was in college once again no traumatic experiences happened but i wasn't plugged into a local church i wasn't serving i wasn't preaching the gospel i really i was i was kind of on and off in regards to intimacy with god and so i graduated college in 2016 and i made a really bad decision i i, I actually decided to stay in san diego but that's not the bad decision what happened is is as i decided to stay in san diego a friend you know asked me you know, do you want to do you want to open a gym with me? And at the time, I was getting into personal training, I was getting into fitness, and I didn't want to go back home, and I had no business experience, so I said yes. Um, but the truth was, since I didn't have a foundation of intimacy with God, as soon as I got into the real world, um, I didn't have I didn't have a foundation. I, I wasn't walking in intimacy. I wasn't walking in awareness and nearness of God. And so, as life got challenging, because when we opened this business, we were working insane hours, twelve to fifteen hour days. We weren't making a ton of money. I had no time for friends. Once again, I felt isolated. Once again, I, I felt like I had no purpose. Once again, I, I was just in this struggle. And so I turned, I turned into blaming, I turned into blaming God. God, why me? Why this? Why that? You know, why I, I didn't have the understanding of why life was so hard in that moment. And so fast forward 2016, 2019, it's three years into this gym and I honestly hated my life. Like I said, I, I didn't have time for anybody. I, I, didn't, I wasn't making money. I wasn't going to church. I wasn't walking with God. I wasn't reading the word of God. It was, it was a really tumultuous time in my life. And I remember that I got this opportunity to work for an online business that was double the pay in remote work. And I remember because I wasn't walking in intimacy with God, my first thought was, 
I'm gonna live my life. I'm gonna travel, I'm gonna do what I want, I'm gonna buy what I want. I'm just gonna do whatever Ross wants. And that was in January, 2020. And sure enough, two months later, something called March 2020 hits the world, the pandemic. And you know what was really crazy about that moment is for the first time in years, I felt that pull of the Holy Spirit like I did when I first got saved. And I knew that it was a, it was a crossroads moment. It was a convergence moment in my life where I had to re-sign up. I had to rededicate, recommit my life to God. But not only that, I had to repent for the last three and a half years of my life. And I remember just weeping in my room, seeing all the tension in the world, seeing what was happening on social media, seeing what was happening in politics and economics and in everything going on in 2020. If you can just imagine 2020, I know we want to forget and it, it, it goes by so fast. But if you remember the tension of that time, you know, my heart was so pulled and I said, God, I repent. I come back to you. I give you my life. You can do whatever you want to do with my life. As long as you do this one thing, God, I just ask one thing. Would you give me my people? Because I'm such a relational person. I'm such a family-based person. And I didn't want to just do this, this life alone. I wanted a tribe of people who love God and who are willing to pursue him at all costs. And so sure enough, I started going to every revival meeting I could go to because in 2020, almost every church was shut down. I started going to things like Let Us Worship with Sean Foy. You know, Jesse and Parker Green were doing tent revivals here in Orange County. And I remember as I started going to this, my faith started to stir again, right? My, I was, I was encouraged. I was getting emboldened. I began to preach the gospel again. I began to get, I began to get with God, pray to God, read the word more. I begin to actually walk this life out as what it means to be a man of God and a Christian. And so sure enough, to make a long story short, I met my amazing friend, Joel, who I now lead our ministry, California Will Be Saved With. And I remember we started doing this worship night once a month in San Diego. And we did that for about five months and the power of God would hit that place. It was incredible. But here's the reality. After those five or six months, we knew that we needed to take it outside the building. We needed to take it into the streets of America where many people would never step foot into a church. Many people would never know the name of Jesus. And so we show up at Huntington Beach in August of 2021, and it was a divine moment that, I never, that I'll never forget where the presence of God met that beach right there. We saw drug addicts delivered. We saw little children saved. We saw about 30 to 40 baptisms in two nights. And, and I remember sitting back after those nights thinking, just over a year ago, God, I just rededicated my life to you. I was walking in sin. I was, I was addicted to porn. And now here I am, free of porn, free of sin, walking in your word, walking in community, getting the opportunity to preach the gospel. And I was overwhelmed by the, the reality of the goodness and kindness and grace of God towards me. But lastly, the story still doesn't end because after we began California Will Be Saved, which is about a year and a half ago, we went to major cities of influence all across California, Hollywood, Los Angeles, San Francisco, San Diego, Orange County, Santa Barbara. And what we do is we take worship to the streets of California and we proclaim the gospel. So if you can imagine a full sound system out on a, on a major city in a major area of influence with thousands of people hearing the sound of worship, then hearing the gospel, we're seeing people saved, we're seeing people healed, we're seeing people delivered, we're seeing people baptized, plugged into the local church. It is amazing. And so, you know, this is well, the reason why I really want to share my story from literally day one to where I'm at today is it's only by the blood and body of Jesus, it's only by the cross that this is possible. I, I, there, there's very little words I can say, but thank you, Jesus. And so I hope that my story really encourages you, whether you're stuck in sin, whether you never had a father, whether you grew up in a low income area, whether you are, you're trying to run a business and you're just not seeing any breakthrough, I want you to know that the greatest thing we could do with our lives, the greatest thing we could do right now in this moment is posture our heart towards Jesus and say, Jesus, here I am. Fix our eyes on his blood, on his body, on his resurrection. Fix our eyes on the man, Jesus, because the reality is when we encounter him, when we see Jesus rightly, everything else will flow out of our life the way it's supposed to and the way that it needs to. So once again, this is my testimony. This is my story. If you have any questions, feel free to comment below. Feel free to shoot me a message. I love connecting with people. I'm so grateful that God has raised me up in this season to preach the gospel, to equip the body of Christ, because just a few years ago, this, this seemed inevitable, this seemed impossible, but only by the power of God, only by his love, only by his grace, only through Jesus, is this possible? So I love you guys and talk to you soon.